Um, now to receive the Holy Spirit, there are all kinds of ways. There are all kinds of people sharing how they experience the Holy Spirit. One very common way is that people spend a long time praying and then experience the Holy Spirit. Uh, also, prayer meeting. When prayer meeting are people are really into prayer, then and also praise and worship, people can experience the Holy Spirit. Also. Now, the laying of hands is helpful. Because many people are not very open. He cannot open his heart to the Lord totally. And when we lay hands on people, what happens is the Holy Spirit through us go to that person. And bless the person. But the Holy Spirit will not stay if the person do not know, does not know how to keep the presence of the Holy Spirit. Aha. I have laid hands on people and then they share. That for a few days they really have a lot of motivation to pray to God. Or they can sleep very well for a few days. But after a few days it went down. Because they could not keep the presence of God. So laying hands on people, I describe it as like this. Do you ride a bicycle? Do you ride a bicycle? Now when you learn to do it, if someone push you a little bit, it will go easier, right? But if the person doesn't move after you push, the bicycle will fall down in a short distance. Uh -huh. But if he keep riding, you know, uh, doing the Hello, hey, After you push, then you keep going. Now there are many people that I pray for and they continue this praying to God and then they keep the anointing. And there are many people who don't keep it. Now some people experience the Holy Spirit very powerfully. Like sometimes people experience great joy. They'll just keep laughing. <laughs> when I do this, I'm not doing it by myself. I'm doing it. I just let the Holy Spirit flow and my joy will keep coming. And I told these people, you have to keep the anointing by praying to God a lot. And I said, do you want to keep the anointing? They said yes. Then I said you have to pray more to keep the anointing. But two or three weeks later I came back and see the same person. He has lost the joy already. I asked him how much you pray every day. Three minutes or so. Three minutes or so. That way he cannot keep it. I told him at least half an hour 
concentrated prayer at least akamwambia at least kama muomba muda mfupi chukua nusu saa ukue na Mungu wako but some people just don't have the motivation to have their relationship with God. Watu wengine hawana ule motisha wa kuendelea kuwa na uhusiano na Mungu. And spend their time with God. Na kwa kuchukua muda wao na Mungu. They say in the prayer I already said everything I need to say. Aha, anasema kwamba kwa kila ombi lolote ambalo naomba nasikizwa tu hata kwa kama ni sekunde mbili. I said this kind of prayer the relational prayer is not saying what you need to say what you want to say. Aha, nasema kwamba maombi kama hayo hayakuruhata kuhusu kusema kile ambacho unahitaji kuambia Mungu. Like people say, well I pray for my family, pray for myself, pray for my church, pray for my country. What else do I pray for? Hey, anasema kwamba nimeombea familia yangu, nimeombea kanisa, nimeombea inji, nimeombea nini. Nahitaji tena kuomba nini? Maombi meishi. Now in order to build a strong presence of God is a relational prayer. Aha, kuweka zile nguvu za Mungu ambazo ni za muhimu ni lazima ukae katika maombi. It's not asking God to bless my family, my church, my country. Sio kuuliza Mungu abariki familia, inji na kanisa. It's believing in God's love and loving God from our heart. Kuamini katika upendo wa Mungu na kukaa katika upendo wa Mungu from our spirit kutoka ndani ya moyo wako. It's like opening up the channel from our heart to God. Ni kufungua mfereji ama mtaro wa maombi wa imani kutoka ndani ya moyo wako mpaka mbinguni. It's like reaching out to God. Hallelujah. Ni kama kumfikia Mungu. Hallelujah. Now when I do that in middle of your power and joy. Because I've learned to open my heart. That's what Jesus said, worship in spirit and in truth. Okay. Now, does anyone have any question before I continue to explain about this laying of hand and the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Which is very helpful. Any questions? Haja sumumuzia kuhusu kuwekelea mikona na kupokea rumu takatifu. Ukona swali hapo na kugangani. Yes, when some people are praying for and then they fell down. Is it from the Holy Spirit? From the Bible we can see examples of people fell down under the power of God. Katika Bibliya tunayesa wana mifano ya watu ambao wanaanguka chini. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 17. Ufunuo mlangu wa kwanza mstari wa kume na sabamu. When... Jesus appeared to John, Apostle John. Wakati Yesu Kristo ana onekania na onekana kwa mtu, and then he fell down. Na kanguka. And then also in Acts chapter nine, matendo mitu matisa. When Saul was persecuting Christian, he was going to Damascus. Wakati Saul alikuwa na tesa wana wa Israeli akielekea Damasco. And Jesus appeared to him. Na Yesu akamuonekania. And he also fell down. Na akaanguka chini. And then when the soldiers tried to arrest Jesus, the soldiers tried to arrest Jesus. Wale maaskari ambao walikuwa wanajaribu kumshika Yesu, and Jesus said, "I am." Na Yesu akasema and the soldiers fell back. So these are examples. Now, old, in the Old Testament too, there were examples in Old Testament. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, there were 120 priests who could not stand when the you know the presence of God was very strong in the built temple built by Solomon. And also in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel Kumi, when he saw visions, he he was so weak he fell on the ground. So these are examples in the Bible that in the presence of God people could fall down. Aha, hiyo baadhi ya mifano ya kwamba katika wakati nguvu za Mungu zinashuka watu wanaanguka chini. Now it's not just falling down. Sio tu kuanguka chini mama. If you ask people who fell down under power of the Holy Spirit, ukiuliza watu ambao wanaanguka chini kutokana na nguvu za Mungu, they will also tell you the experience peace or love or joy or freedom. Watakwambia kwamba tuliishi upendo, tukaishi amani, tukaishi utukufu, wakaona wame wako huru. Or they saw visions. Na ama waliona maono. There was one person I prayed for and she fell down and she went to heaven. 
Take enough time. Kuna kuna mtu mmoja ambaye alimuombea na akaanguka chini na akaenda mbinguni although hakuwa amekufa lakini akaenda mbinguni. And then in heaven Jesus took away her burdens. Na kule mbinguni Yesu akaongea na yeye. And she lay on the floor for about two hours. Na akalala pale kwa masaa mawili. So these are really experience of the Holy Spirit. Yes. But I want to tell you that also the evil spirit came from the Holy Spirit. Because God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit created the angels, and the angels fell. Some of them fell and became evil spirits. So evil spirits are in some way similar to Holy Spirit, in some way. But they are totally different that evil spirit destroy people's life. But Holy Spirit brings peace and love and joy and build up the spiritual life. So when people with evil spirit, they, they pray for people in their way, People also, some people could also fail. Aha, na sema kama wale watu ambao watu na miro, unajua miro. Pia wao wakiwekele watu mikono wakiwa wambea wana anguka tu. Unaweza fikia kwa mani romu takatifu, kumbe si romu takatifu. Ni miro ya wale watu. So we can just tell by whether people fall down now. We cannot tell. Ha, atuwezi sema ya kwamba watu wakia kukachini. We have to look at the life of the preacher. Aha, tuangalia maisha ya yule mubi. And also the result of his prayer, whether people love God more, have peace and love and joy. One time I saw someone call himself a pastor. Now this person, he, when he prayed for people, these people really responded in a very, you know, overly, um, with big actions, very powerful, very, you know, uncontrollable actions. Aha, ya kwamba uyu mtungaji wakati ya naombea watu, watu walikuwa wanaihishi kufu zingine njiga wata wata uwezi zikontrolu watu wanakami kama wameleo. And these people would kick people and they have to be held by four people. And I later found out that this person who called himself a pastor, you know, she, he said that when he saw beautiful women, he would dream about the beautiful women. <laughs> And he talk about different ways he think about women or do things to women. So And I saw him also hug the girls when he prayed for them. Okay? Hug the girls when he prayed for them. Oh, kama wakati anapoombea wasichana, anafanya namna gani? Hug. Eh anawa bush wakati anawaombea. So I you know I think what he has is he has evil spirit inside him. And I figure from the William Tungaji, I can imagine that he was a serial murderer. So when you hear some preachers coming somewhere, you have to know their background, know their teachings, know their life. Wakati unapona tia kwamba mtumishi wa Mungu amejitokeza ama mhubiri, ni lazima umchunguze ujue maisha yake ya nyumbani na hata ya kiroho inafanana na mara gani ndio uanze kufuata. Sio kusikia tu mtu yana kabaliza dano zia. Na tayari hapana, lazima uchunguze maisha ya huyu mtu uone inakaa namna gani. Now it's best that you build up the anointing yourself and you pray for your people. Wewe kama mchungaji it doesn't matter if they experience the Holy Spirit slowly, it doesn't matter. If they hunger for God, eventually they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now for myself, uh, what I don't know. Now for myself, Washington has known me for a long time. 
kwa yeye eh, Washington amemjua kwa muda mrefu he has seen me pray for people in different meetings amemuona akiombea watu kwa mikutano kadhaa and also i have many videos online on youtube pastor yip you can find it aha ameweka pia maombi yake kwa mitandao pastor yip ukiangalia youtube utampata and you can see many testimonies of people being changed utaona kwamba kuna ushuhuda pale wa watu ambao wamebadilishwa so i'm just saying you can trust me and i lean on you anasema kwamba utamwamini tu wakati atakuwekelea mikono kwako yeye hana miroho and also the people i pray for they all experience peace or love or joy or, you know it's all positive or healing eh uh anaona -huh. kwamba uh, kuna watu ambao wameombea hapa wameishi nguvu za roho mtakatifu wameishi amani na hata wengine wamepokea uponyaji okay uh -huh. so now you will say how come some people fall down some people don't ha uta utasema kwamba kwa nini wengine wanaanguka na wengine hawanguki Now sometimes is how open the person is. Aha, wakati mwingine inalingana na jinsi umefungua roho yako. And also some people are very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Watu wengine wanaishia kali sana kwa Roho Mtakatifu. Uh, the first day I was here, was it first day? I pray for someone and he really you can see that he responded very strong to the Holy Spirit. Anasema siku ya kwanza baada kwa paliombea mtu na mtu akawa ana anachangamka kulingana na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu ambazo zilikuwa zimeshuka ndani mwake. Now when people experience powerful it doesn't mean they are necessarily spiritual. Now that's paradoxical. They are not necessarily spiritual. Aha. Ya kwamba wakati unakuwekelea mikono na kukuombea unapoishi zile nguvu haimaanishi kwamba wewe uko kiroho. They don't necessarily love God very much. Hata wengine pia hawapendi Mungu sana. Some of them do some of them don't. Wengine wanapenda na wengine hawampendi. So you know that we all need the balance of the Holy Spirit and the scripture and the willingness of, of the person willingness to obey God and follow God. Aha, kuna nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu lakini kuna wale ambao wako na ule mwito ama wanatamani kujua sana kulingana na ukweli wa Mungu. So don't think that people who experience the Holy Spirit very powerfully they are necessarily more spiritual. Aha, usifikirie kwamba wale watu ambao wanaishi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu sana ya kwamba wao wako kiroho. Also when I pray for people I'm very careful not to push people. Aha, anasema kwamba wakati anapoombea watu yeye anakuanga mwangalifu wa sukumi watu. I have seen ameona people pastors evangelists they push people when they pray for people. Ameona wachungaji wa injilisti wakati anawekelea mtu anasukuma eh. Now um when people pray like this you know what is the motive? Ha watu wanapoomba hivi ya kwamba ya kwanza I will tell you there are two directions. Aya wapi tuko na njia mbili. One direction is some, some people they just want people to fall down so they push people. Oho njia ya kwanza ni kwamba watu wengine wanataka kwa kiombea watu waanguke chini ndio sababu wanashukuma watu wanafanya nini? But also it's also true that for some people when they pray for people and they hit hard And a person can experience the Holy Spirit faster. It, it can happen like that. Hey, kuna watu wengine wanapoombea watu, yeye ni kutaka tu mtu kofi kidogo pap na nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu zinaingia huyo mtu. So people say they push him but then he say I'm just hitting him hard to let the Holy Spirit come powerfully upon them. Eh, ana kusukuma na kumgonga kwamba watifu anasema namsaidia ile aishi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. So I won't necessarily judge them. Okay. I won't necessarily judge them. As come again please. I won't necessarily just them and say that they want people to fall down. Oho. Aoni kama ni muhimu sana wale watu kuombea watu na kuwasukuma wanaanguke chini. But I would watch the person for a while. Ataangalia ule mtu kwa muda. Now some people pray like this. Na watu wengine wanaomba hivi. And then pray, pray and then push a little bit and then he fall back a little bit and then the hand never give in. Mm -hmm. I push again. Anaomba na anasukuma mtu pole pole. Anaomba kusukuma pole pole until he falls down. Anamsukuma pole pole mpaka vile atakavyoanguka chini. Now that for sure is pushing. Kwa kweli anasukuma. But some people hit hard. I I've, I've seen evangelists like that. Hit hard and I the people can feel a strong presence. It's different from pushing 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 and pushing the person. Anasema kuna evangelists wengine wana gonga wana goga kifua ili uhisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu na uanguke chini. Na wengine wanasukuma tu pole pole mpaka vile 
Okay. As, as I said, laying our hands is just a way to help. It's still most important for that person to upkeep the relationship with God. 